All right, and welcome back to our series we're doing called The Journey to Freedom. And uh, we kicked this off last week talking uh, about the fact that we were created for freedom. We also made announcements last week that on June the 3rd, as our group announced, we're going to be launching a Celebrate Recovery program. And that is to create a safe place where we can deal with the hurts, habits, and hang-ups of life. And again, we did this poll last week. Let's do it again. How many of you, be honest to admit, you're dealing at times with hurts, habits, and hang-ups? Yeah, that's, uh, we're going to talk about some of that, some of that today. Uh, hard times, it's not, not always easy to just kind of uh, own up to that. It was, it's really, really wild. A, a couple years ago in, in Florida, there was a guy driving through a neighborhood, and uh, his, he looked and he saw some packages on the porch uh, of a house, and he stopped in front of the house for a second, and he was just looking at those packages. And then he backs up into the driveway and uh, opens his car and loads those packages into his car and drives off. And uh, the family had a uh, camera on the outside of their house right there on their driveway. So they were able to get a good view of the license plates. And the police went to the man's home, found the stuff that he had stolen. And he owned it. Yes, I did this. And when they were questioning him, they said, you know, why, why did you do this? And he, he said, well, I was driving by. He said, and I saw the packages there. And he said, I, I felt this urge inside to just take them. And he said, I thought to myself, it's meant to be. It's meant to be. Well, then I guess it's meant for you to be in jail then, huh? That's, that kind of goes on. And when I read that, I just thought, you know, sometimes I think that's kind of how we are. We feel like we're just subject to the fate of this life. And that's not so. Look at me. God created us for freedom. Amen. He created us for freedom, and that's what I talked about last week, and if you weren't here last week, really want to encourage you to go online, listen to that message. I I think it's just a great step for being reminded why God created us to begin with, to walk in the fullness of the freedom with Him, and that was why Jesus came. Jesus said that I've come, that you might have life, and that you might have it more, what? Abundantly. That's the freedom that He wants us to walk in. Are you walking in that freedom. Well, today I want to I want to talk about. So, what are the first steps? Um, last week, talking about that we all kind of you know have stuff that we need to get free from, and um, and and so well, what what really are the kind of the first steps toward that? And that's the journey I, w- I want to take today. Beginning today, over the next few weeks, we're going to be looking at a story from Acts chapter twelve that is about uh, the apostle Peter being placed in prison. And in this story, uh, as we unpack it together, there are some really great uh, principles that can help us on our journey to freedom. So let's set the groundwork today. Let's look at the passage of Scripture, Acts chapter 12. The first, we're just going to read the first four verses today, and this is taken from the New Living Translation. For those of you watching online, we're going to throw this up on the screen, as well as those of you here. Uh, you can also track with us on your outline. We do have Bibles in the pews, and if you'd like to track along in that, those are New International Version. Those will read just a little bit differently, but welcome to do that. And those Bibles are our gift to you. If you need a Bible, feel free to take that home. If you have have a friend or someone who needs one, feel free to take it for them. And for you watching online, if you don't have a Bible, would you please contact us? We would love to send you one. It is our passionate belief that every single one of us ought to spend time regularly in the Word of God. Amen? That's just our, 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 where our strength comes from. So please feel free to do that. Let's read. About that time, King Herod Agrippa began to persecute some believers in the church. He had the apostle James, John's brother, killed with a sword. And when Herod saw how much this pleased the Jewish people, he also arrested Peter. This took place during the Passover celebration. Then he imprisoned him, placing him, listen to this, under the guard of four squads of four soldiers each. Somebody do the math on that. How many soldiers? 16. Yeah, I feel like I'm working with my 10-year-old here. Yeah, 16. That's good. 16. Herod intended to bring Peter out for public trial after the Passover. Let's talk about the first steps to freedom. Here's the first one. Everyone finds themselves shackled sometimes. Everyone finds themselves shackled 
sometimes. When, when I was reading this, this story again and just kind of saying, God, what, what are you wanting to say to us out of this? One of the things that jumped off the page to me was, who is it in this story that's in prison? It's not a trick question. Who's being put in prison? Peter. Peter is the apostle, one of the, one of the 12 disciples, one of the, one of the inner three. He, he's the one who's dealing now with these, these shackles and this imprisonment that he has to deal with. And, and I know what you're thinking. You're saying, well, yeah, Steve, he, he's, he's got, you know, he needs to be free, but he didn't cause this. I mean, he wasn't, it wasn't him, and that's true. But isn't it true for us? Some chains are chains we choose. Some things that we deal with in our life that we need to be free from are because of choices that we have made. Stay with me. But some of us are dealing with issues because of the choices of others. Some of us have had things that have happened to us that other people have done. And you know what? We're dealing with chains that weren't chains that were our, necessarily our fault. They were things that happened to us, and we are dealing with that. But here's the point I want to make. Everyone deals with shackles Sometimes, every single person. Look at the passage of Scripture. We talk about living in this fallen world, and this is where the imprisonment and the change come from, from being in this fallen planet. Now, look at what Paul says in Romans chapter 5 and verse 12. He says, when Adam sinned, sin entered the world, and Adam's sin brought death. Read it with me. So death spread to everyone, for everyone sin. And because that sin pervades every single one of us, every single one of us have issues that we have to deal with. Now, again, this is just not, not only great church today, this is great just group therapy. Do, do this with me. I know some people are struggling to, to fi- figure out whether or not this message is for them. Help them out. Just turn to the person you're sitting beside and just say, you've got issues. <laughs> Yeah, that felt really good, didn't it? Yeah, now, now say, it, say it back to them. Say, well, you've got issues too. You know, you've got issues too. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's, the, that's the level playing ground that we're all on. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. That means every one of us. And so all of us deal with chains. It's just a matter of what kind of chains. In fact, have you ever thought about when you go through Scripture, have you seen, have you really seen the junk that people have in their lives? I mean, there's all kinds of stuff. Uh, I mean, when you go back and, and you read about Noah, you know, Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord, and you know, and he, he gets on the ark and he saves the world, yay, Noah, and then you read just a chapter later, here's Noah, drunk, you know, acting like a crazy man. You know, he's got this alcohol issue. And then you find him, you know, God blessing all these incredible people, people like Samson who had all this strength, but yet you see the pride that comes out in Samson's life. Or you get, pick a guy like Abraham, you know, who was the guy that God selected to bring the covenant to this world through. And yet when you follow the storyline of, of Abraham's life, and he lies, he's so filled with fear that he lies even though God's blessing him. You see his codependency come out and how he gives in to Sarah to, to have a child that, you know, that God had promised him to have one way and he gives in to people around him and he does it a different way. And you go, holy cow, when you begin to look at this, this guy's, this guy's messed up. What about David? You know, the description of David is, is a description that every single person in this room would love to be said about them. It said that David was what kind of man? Yeah, a man after God's own heart. And you go, wow, that's a, did you look? This guy is a mess. I mean, he's got a sexual addiction that comes out. And then he gets a gal pregnant and to try to cover it up. He has his wife, he has her husband killed. I mean, this is craziness. This is the guy, what? Because everybody's got issues. If you follow the storyline through every single person, you see it everywhere. And what about Peter? I mean, out beside the fact that he's thrown in prison for preaching to God, did he have any other issues? Oh, my gosh. Are you kidding me? The guy has, a, has anger issues that come out all over the place. I mean, you see him here raging, here raging, you know, let's call fire on fire from hell, you know, and all this kind of stuff. And then when they came to the guard to arrest Jesus, what's Peter do? Pulls out a sword, cuts off the high priest's servant's ear, and Jesus is like, what's wrong with you, dude? You know? 
And he, you know, heals the guy. And you follow this. Everyone's got issues. Now, this is so important. Because so often, we, when we talk about issues, we, talk, we think, well, that's just for other people. When we talk about celebrate recovery. We say, well, that's for other people. You know, well, you know, those are, those, those are drug addicts and alcohol, you know, alcohol, you know, alcoholics. And, you know, that, no, 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 no. Did you know that only one in four people attend Celebrate Recovery for alcohol and drugs? Most of the people who attend Celebrate Recovery are attending for other kinds of issues, like uh, stuff that's going on in life because of anger or because of codependency or because of toxic shame of things that they're experiencing. There are so many other things that go on in the lives of people. And we're surprised. Look at me. Please hear my heart. I just want you to take a second. I want you to think about who's sitting around you and who is standing in front of you. And here's what you need to know. We've all got issues. Amen. Amen. We've all got issues. I was coaching a pastor this week on, on, a phone, on a phone call, and he was talking about uh, another pastor that he just found out that is really struggling, and he, he was shocked. He said, you know, this guy seems so strong. This guy seems so, you know, so, so stalwart, and, and yet, you know, now it looks like he's struggling, and, and he said, just surprising to me, and I said, why is that surprising to you? If you cut him, he'll bleed. He is nothing but flesh and blood, just like you. Look at me. Please hear my heart. You got issues. The people beside you have issues. And the guy standing in front of you got issues. Amen. 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 Peter did. Everyone finds themselves shackled sometimes. That gets me to the second thought. The journey to freedom starts the day we admit we're in captivity. Journey to freedom starts the day we admit kept, we're in captivity. Now, I don't know what kind of captivity you deal with. don't know what kind of change you wear. don't know what issues you struggle with. But your journey to freedom will never start until the day you're willing to go, this is me. This is what's going on. I love the passage of Scripture. Peter, or David writes this in Psalm 32 too. Read it out loud with me. He says, yes, what joy for those whose record the Lord has cleared of guilt, whose lives are lived in complete honesty. In other words, God can't heal what we won't reveal. And somewhere on the journey, we've got to come to a place and say, you know what, this is, this is my place where I struggle. This is my issue I wrestle with. And being able to be completely honest with God about that. Look at me. Does God already know what's going on? Well, of course he does. And we're just admitting to God what's already there. In fact, I love that because when we talk about recovery and what really is recovery, the first step of recovery is I admit my life is out of control. I'm a mess. And I am not able to save myself from this. And that's, that's the beginning. That first step is the beginning of our journey toward freedom. But can we be honest? That first step is the hardest one. Because we live in denial. We don't want to admit it. There, there was a story a few years ago, and I thought, this is just a, a case study in human nature. There's a guy, a 25-year-old in, in, in China. He was an artist and a poet walking along a river, and he's uh, just taken in the beauty uh, of the day and uh, kind of thinking whatever artists and poets think, I guess. And um, as, he's, as he's walking along, there's a, he, there's a, he's walking right along the edge of the river, and here's some really soft-looking grass right there. And as he walks out on it, he discovers it really is not grass at all. It was moss covering the, the river. And he sinks, and he goes down into this really thick silt and mud and gets buried, and he can't get out. And he started trying to wiggle himself free. And the more he wiggled, guess what happens? Like spinning a tire. You know, he's just digging the hole deeper. So he's sinking and sinking and sinking. And now he's really stuck and he can't, he can't move. And he's like, what am I, you know, I going to do? He was there for four hours stuck in that mud until there were a couple of sailors, or a couple of sailors, a couple of fishermen who came by on the river and they spotted him. And they got on their cell phone, and they called emergency rescue, and they came, and it was another seven hours before they could get him out of the mud and onto the bank. The crazy part of this story 
was it was totally unnecessary to take that much time. The kid had a cell phone in his pocket. He could have called for help in the first 10 minutes that he was stuck or 20 minutes or half hour, whatever point. He was too embarrassed to make the phone call. It took two fishermen who spotted him making the call for him or he would still be in that mud in that river somewhere. And when they got there, this was the other crazy part, when rescue got there to finally help the kid, when they came to get him, they found that he had sunk so low that the mud and silt had gotten down in his pants and was sticking to him, and they couldn't pull him out. And they said, if you'll just undo your belt, drop your trousers, they said, we can pull you out. And he was too embarrassed to take his trousers off. Throw that picture up on the screen. Have we got... Got that picture? There you go. This is this kid digging. But he's fighting them. His pride is keeping him right where he is. Now look at me. That's our story. That's our story. We are so proud. We are too proud. We're too embarrassed. We don't want to admit that this is going on in our life. We're, we're too ashamed of the fact that we've got this peace or this place in our life that we just can't own up to. And sometimes we take a, a little bit different approach to it. I, this is on your outline. The four things that I identified that we do instead of admitting our bondage, you can maybe identify with one or two of those. First of all is we minimize. We minimize and we just say, you know what, it's no big deal. Um, yeah, you know, I do this a little bit, but it's no big deal. Nobody really gets hurt. It's not really a problem. I can stop anytime I want. All those kinds of things that we say, and we just, we just minimize the impact. Uh, yeah, I, I yell, but it's not that often. Yeah, I do this, but it's not that big of a deal. Or we generalize, and that's what we talk about just a moment. We, we just say everybody's got issues. Yeah, I deal with this. You know, but everybody's got problems. Yes, they do. That still doesn't mean you shouldn't deal with yours. Just because everybody's got issues means that all of us need to deal with our issues. Or we rationalize. And rationalize means I've got a good reason for my struggles. In other words, if, if you knew who I lived with, you'd know why I do what I do. Or if you knew the boss that I had, you, you, would, you would understand my behavior. Or, or if you knew what I had to put up with every day, if you knew the stress I was under. And we find all of these reasons to, to deflect and to blame the people of the world around us rather than taking responsibility for ourselves. Um, and it, it, I don't know about you, doesn't this, doesn't this make us crazy sometimes, though, when people just won't take responsibility for, for their own stuff? I mean, I always, always love it when, you know, somebody's in a bad mood and you say, man, what's going on? You seem really, you know, kind of cranky today. Well, I got out on the wrong side of the bed. Well, would you do the world a favor? Kind of head back home, go back to bed and roll out the other side for us, please? You know, if that's the deal. But we, we just rationalize our, our stuff away. Or we patronize. And this was one that I heard a lot growing up in a, in a family where there was so much addiction around us. I know I'll, I need to do something someday. I know I need to do something someday. You see, when we admit that we've got an issue and we say, you know what, I know I've, I know I've got a problem and I'm going to deal with that someday, we're giving ourselves a pass. Because even though we're owning it, we're not really owning it. We're just simply admitting it. We're just also never going to get around to taking care of it. You know, my mom was addicted to prescription medication for as long as I can remember. Uh, I could never remember a time when my mom wasn't taking something and often out of it at home. And my mother died uh, at 65 years of age, which is my age right now. She died at my age, uh, still addicted and still, and, and after the pills had taken a toll on her body, she died much younger than she, than she really should have. And, and I've often thought this, gang. 
what if church had been a safe place? My mom, you know, I'm, I'm third generation church of God. I grew up, man, I started going to church when I was a week old. And my mom was in church all the time. What if church was a real place where people with real problems were able to talk about that? And I wrote a newsletter article sometime after my mom's death, and I, I said, one day I, I want to pastor a real church. I want to pastor a place where people are honest and the place is safe and we can walk with each other on this journey to freedom. That's the kind of church I want to be a part of. Don't you? Amen. Let me give you a, a third one. A third part of the step to freedom is... And, is another big step is, is, is getting out is understanding how we got in. A big step to getting out is how we got in. You ever talk to someone about the mess they're in? And you go, man, what happened? They go, I don't know. Well, if you don't know how you got to where you are, odds are you're probably going to keep going back to where you are. Because if you always do what you've always done, you always get what you always got. Amen? <laughs> Just kind of the way, the way it is. I was, um, when, I, when, I, when I came here back in the 80s, I was an associate pastor. Um, I started snow skiing. The church went on, we, um, on yearly ski trips. And that was part of my job as an associate pastor was help lead that trip. And fell in love with snow skiing. Loved to, you know, loved to go uh, every year to Winter Park. And, and we would go. And, and uh, that was back when I had knees, you know, that could actually do that kind of stuff. And we, we group of us that would, would go together, a bunch of us guys would go. And we, we would love to jump. And we would go off these, all these little jumps. And we would do all this stuff. And like guys do, we would dare each other do this or do that. And we were stupid enough to do this and do that. And uh, one year we were there, and we were on the Mary Jane side of, of, of Winter Park, and we were, we were going down, and we were doing these jumps, and we were falling all over the mountain, laughing at each other, having a good time. We got to the bottom, and uh, we were getting ready to go back up, and somebody asked me what time it was, and I, I pulled my sleeve up, and my watch was gone. And I had a, a black sport Casio watch, and I had a loose pin in the strap. And um, I realized that somewhere on that mountain with all my jerking and gyrating and falling, somewhere that watch came off. And I said, oh, man, I lost my watch. And, and they said, well, let's go down the same run again, and maybe, maybe we can find it. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm laughing. I'm thinking, you know, that run's about you know, half a mile long, and it's several hundred yards wide. It could be anywhere on the mountain. And I said, well, let's just go ahead and go on up. And if we go down, if we spot it, we do. If we don't, no big deal. It's not an expensive watch. And we're going down, and we just kind of forget about it. And we're skiing and, and you know jumping and falling and jumping and falling, doing all this kind of stuff. And they say, hey, Steve, over here. So I see this jump, and I go jump off of it. And I crash, and I'm laying on my back, you know, splattered on the ground. And as I'm laying there splattered on the ground, somebody started laughing. They said, man, you fell on that jump last time. And somebody said, yeah, and there's your watch. And sure enough, I kid you not, man, a foot and a half from my arm was that black Casio watch where I had splatted on that, that, that mountain. Well, here's the deal. You keep jumping, you're going to keep falling. Amen? Somewhere along the way, you got to say, how did I get here? How did I get to where I am? And that's a great point. How did you get to where you are? You know, for some of us, we talked about the fact that these, these chains aren't chains that we chose. Our chains are the result of some things that happened to us. And even those, you're going to have to deal with. Because whether your chains are chains that you chose or whether your chains are the result of someone doing something to you, it's still your responsibility to find freedom. Years ago, when I was here, I, I had a, a young lady in my office one day. We were talking, and the gal that always had an angry edge about her, 
and just always seem to have a something sarcastic to say, always seem to be ready for a fight, always had something criti- some kind of critical remark, always had this, this anger that was just kind of beneath the surface. And in the course of our conversation that afternoon, as we were just kind of talking, I, I looked at her and I said, can you answer a question for me? She said, what? I said, why are you so angry? She was a good kid could be funny she looked at me and all of a sudden she just started crying then she started sobbing I came over by her and I was patting her arm I said what's going on and she said Pastor Steve I've never I've never told anyone this before but when I was young my my older brother molested me. And she said, and when I got old enough to protect myself, I vowed no one would ever take advantage of me again. And she was living with this anger that was generated not just toward people who might take advantage of her, it was generated toward anyone who got in her path. Her anger that used to serve as a defense to protect herself had become shackles that she needed to be set free from. You see, I'm not saying that the stuff we have to deal with is always stuff we chose because often it's not. Sometimes it's because of where we grew up and what we were experienced. But whether the chains are chains you chose or whether they're the chains that have been put upon you, look at me, I love you, But if you're going to be free, it's going to be up to you to find that freedom. Amen. Let me give you one more. Getting comfortable with your chains is not the same as being free. Getting comfortable with your chains is not the same as being free. There was a guy in, um, in England, his name was Amir Ali, and he was uh, serving four years in jail on the Isle of, right, uh, Isle of Wight um, because he was doing drugs. He had heroin, cocaine, he was both using and selling. He had a four-year jail sentence. And uh, one day while he, while he was in jail, the, um, the jailer came and told him that he had a hearing. Uh, His uh, attorney was going to be there in court, and he had a hearing, and could be possible that his sentence could be reduced, or could be actually, uh, he could be set free, but he was going to have to, he had to go in for this hearing as they were, they were having all of this stuff going on. And Amir, rather than jumping up and running out with this jailer, looked around at his cell and said, I'm not going. He goes, you know, I, uh, I, I, I got this cell kind of how I like it. It's really comfortable. It's one of the nicer cells. And I know that if I leave, uh, one of the other prisoners is going to be asked to be put in here, and I'm not going to get my cell back. So I'm not going. I, I thought the judge's response was hilarious because when the judge called for the court and called for Amir to come before him, the bailiff came up and said, Amir is not here. And the judge said, well, where, was, where is he? And he said, well, he didn't want to leave his cell. And the judge started laughing, and he said, so when do prisoners get to choose whether or not they come before the judge? And he started laughing, and he said, said, well, he didn't want to come. And he said, the judge said, well, I thought when you got to go to court, if you didn't want to go, I said, I "I guess just assume some big burly jailer would grab you by the nap of the neck and throw you in a van and say, "You're you're going before the judge whether you want to or not. But I guess that wasn't the way it was, and there was this big scuttle about this. But they hit me. This guy is, again, so indicative of how we get sometimes. Here's a guy who had a chance at freedom, but he was comfortable right where he was. And one of the things that happens to us is when when we've dealt with pain in our life or we've dealt with issues in our life, sometimes along the way, instead of really coming to a place where we want to be free from that, we make ourselves comfortable with our shackles. And we decide this is as good as it's going to get. 
And I would rather deal with these shackles than go through the hard work that's necessary to be free. Jesus asked a really profound question one day. He was walking through a place where there were a lot of uh, sick people that were laid. And as he walked through, uh, as people were there begging for money that people that passed by, he saw a guy who had been lame from like 38 years, had been laying there. And look at what it says. And it says, and when Jesus saw him lying there, and he learned he had been in this condition for a long time. Jesus asked him, read it out loud with me, do you want to get well? Let that question sink in. Do you want to get well? We've talked about this morning the fact that we've all got issues. We, we've all got stuff in our life that we deal with. We've all got pain that needs to be healed. We've all got problems that need to be solved. We all got habits that need to be broken. And it really doesn't matter. It doesn't matter whether your deal is that you're a food addict and you eat to medicate your pain. Whether you're a gambling addict and you gamble to medicate your pain. Or, or whether you deal with anger or codependency or drugs or alcohol, all, all of that, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what your shackles are. Here's the deal. We're never going to be free until the day we cry out to God and admit what we're struggling with and allow God to heal them. That question Jesus asked is profound and powerful. Do you want to get well? This morning, I've asked Rachel to lead us in a, a, just a beautiful song. It's a, a reminder that God takes us just as we are. And, and this morning, whatever your issue, whatever your struggle, whatever your place, the chains or shackles that you wear, whatever it is that you're dealing with in your life, you can come openly before God who waits with open arms. Jesus said, come to me, all of you who are weary, heavy with burden. I'll give you rest. Aren't you tired of dealing with this stuff all by yourself? The first steps of freedom are us being willing to admit to ourselves and then admit to God, here I am, Lord. I need your help. During these next few moments while we sing this song, I just want to invite you to that process. And I want to invite you just to a moment where you get honest with God. And you can do that right where you sit. You can let that pew be your meeting place with God. And you can just open your heart and whisper whatever prayer you need to pray to him. Uh, if some of you want to slip out and you want to come to the front where you can stand before God or kneel at an altar, if that'll make you feel more comfortable, if that can make that more of a defining moment for you, you're more than welcome to. But take this first step where you open your heart and be completely honest with God about what you're wrestling with and let God take you by the hand and begin this journey to freedom. Rachel. Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, and that thou bidst me come to.
Our Father, how we thank you. For your amazing grace. You receive us just as we are. I wonder how many times, God, you have whispered into the, our ears along this journey. Do you want to get well? God, we do. And today, Lord, for everyone who's here, for all of us watching online, today we open our hearts before you. And today, God, we admit stuff that we haven't really wanted to face. We admit stuff we really haven't wanted to deal with. We admit challenges for some of us that we have had for years in our life. For some of us, God, it's, it's pain that we haven't wanted to look at, we haven't wanted to face. But you can't heal, God, those things that we won't reveal to you. And so today, we reach out. Lord, would you, would you take us by the hand? For some of us, Lord, our, our journey to freedom may be as simple as holding on to your hand and walking with you along the way. For others of us, Lord, to really walk in the fullness of freedom, it may be taking your hand and it may be taking the hand of a good friend and letting them walk with us to pray for us and encourage us and keep us accountable for uh, the, the freedom that, we, that we're wanting in our life. For others of us, God, it, it may be taking your hand and the hand of a friend and it may be becoming a part of a program like Celebrate Recovery where we can have a safe place, a confidential place to talk about stuff that we've never talked about before. To talk about pain we haven't wanted to look at before. To talk about habits that we haven't wanted to own before. But God, what I believe today with all my heart is that your grace is great enough to forgive us of whatever we've done. And that your power is great enough to set us free from wherever we find ourselves chained. You're the Jehovah Rapha. The God who heals us. And you are also our deliverer. and The God who can save us. And so today, we stretch out our arms of faith to you. Take us this morning, Lord. Just as we are. In the power of your holy name. In the precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. And everyone said, Amen.